Hey guys, BG here, and today in this DevOps Deep Dive, I'm gonna be showing you how you can take the first step of many into improving your development experience by automating your development environment. If you think about it, it's one of the first things in your development career that you don't actually consider could be later on technical debt for you. And what I mean by that is when you start developing nine times out of 10, you just start installing things. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't take that process and grow from it, but it definitely means that later on when you try and reproduce that process, it's gonna be very difficult. This is where automation comes in. Automation doesn't just save time, but it saves you time in the sense of how do I do this thing? And how do I make sure that when I do it again later, it's done the right way so that I'm guaranteeing that the setup is what it should be. Basically, what we're talking about is automating all the things. Anytime you install a program, automate it. Anytime you configure a file, automate it. Anytime you have anything that you need for your dev environment that you want it to be elsewhere, automate it. Never do the same thing twice because when you automate those things, you don't have to be worried about doing them again later. So let's start with the first thing, the operating system. I have a fresh Manjaro with i3 installation here. I chose Manjaro with i3 for two reasons. The first one being, that Manjaro actually has a very nice wizard for installing Arch Linux. And on top of it, Manjaro also has a community edition with it that includes i3 gaps. So when we're talking about automation and making it kind of very easy to set up a foundation for yourself, having an operating system that you like, as well as any other features that might be coupled with that operating system out of the box is super valuable. I'm gonna go ahead and hit mod enter to open up my terminal. And then I'm gonna type in sudo pacman s why you whoa bg you're not automating this whoa, 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 why why aren't you automating this i have found that system upgrades can be very very troublesome you'll find yourself having some type of broken driver or something else that happens and you really don't want that to happen in the middle of your workflow when you're developing something or working on something so in this case we're going to do a manual pac-man upgrade the main thing here is we're upgrading the operating system manually and we're choosing not to put that in automation so it doesn't hurt us later on when we're trying to do something really quickly the first thing we want to think about when it comes to automation is how do we want to manage the things that we want to automate the things like configurations the things like package installations and other requirements that we need for our development environment but the main focus here is really how does it solve it the best for us there are some very simple things that we can use to start, but then later on, when we wanna manage more complex things, maybe rely on other tooling. The two tools I'm talking about in this case are gonna be Bash and Ansible. Now, Bash is a very easy way of starting with automation. But when you start talking about things like, do I know that that change actually happened? How can I confirm it? As well as managing files properly, doing things like templating, Bash kind of falls short. So what I decided to do was lean on another automation tool called Ansible. I use it because in my opinion, it does a good job of replicating almost what you would do in Bash, but translating that in a very simple form of YAML that you can just easily configure and then run playbooks. One of the things I personally like is having a path in my home directory that I can easily access and reference at any time. So this is gonna create a directory in my home path called dot, dot files. We're actually gonna create one more directory to create a very special file that we're gonna use over and over again. It's going to be what we call our dot files script. Now this script is a script that we're going to run every time we want to update our environment. So to do that, I'm going to create another directory in our dot files called bin. And in that bin directory, I'm going to create a file called dot files. Now, if you don't know, the bin folder is normally a folder that's added to your path to provide binaries or shell scripts that you can run anywhere on the operating system. So we're creating a path that we're going to add later to reference so that we too can just run dot files anywhere on the operating system. We don't have to worry about running it in the dot dot files slash bin path. So once we create that script, we also need to make sure that we can execute against that. And to do that, all you have to do is type in chmod 755 to make it executable. If we try executing this, it's fine. We can just use the direct path to reference it and run it and it doesn't return anything. But at the bare minimum, this is a reproducible script we can now use. 
Now, one other thing you might notice is you have no editor whatsoever to work with if this is a fresh installation. Another reason why I chose Manjaro with i3 is because it includes Vim. Now, I use NeoVim, but I want NeoVim to be installed a very specific way with Ansible that I don't really want to have to do in Bash. So let's do that. Let's create a shell script that is reusable that allows us to guarantee every time we run it, we have the latest version of Ansible. Now I wanna write this as a bash script. So I'm gonna make sure that bash is executed. Now there's one other thing I wanna do. We're gonna make sure that this script also returns errors as it needs to. Now, what we really wanna do is, is we wanna check to see if the program is installed. And if it's not, then run the package manager. And we're gonna say if exclamation mark, which means not. And we're gonna define a very simple if statement here. Now in this if statement, we're gonna do dash X with a double quote. And that's going to check if a value is defined or not. So what command are we checking for? Well, inside of our code, we're gonna type in C-O-M-M-A-N-D dash V and then the command we wanna check for. And that's gonna be Ansible. After that, we're gonna type then, and then we're gonna close our if statement with a B. What have we got? We have an if statement that checks if something is not defined or essentially if we execute the command Ansible and see that it's not defined, then we're going to do something. In this case, we're going to install Ansible. So I'm going to do sudo pacman dash capital S Ansible. Now, when we run this script, we should see Ansible get checked for. And if it's not there, pacman will prompt me for my sudo password. If I do this, you're gonna see, just like I told you, it's saying, hey, I need to be able to run the Pac-Man installer because Ansible is not there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna type in my sudo password and I'm gonna hit enter. Now, what do we notice? We notice that it says, hey, Ansible core, and it gives us a whole bunch of prompting. We wrote this script with the confidence that it should do what we're trying to tell it to. So do we really need to prompt? Now that's up to you. If you want it to prompt, you can just continue writing your script, but for me, I want this to be a completely automated process. So if we go back to the script, we're gonna see that we have pseudo pacman dash capital S Ansible. And in that, we actually can add one more thing to it to make sure that we don't have to have any type of intervention. And that's gonna be the no confirm flag. If we run that same command again, what we're gonna notice is it's gonna go ahead and start installing Ansible without asking us. If I run it over and over and over, it doesn't matter because now if we type in Ansible, we can see that Ansible is available. Now that we have Ansible installed, we can now look at the next thing we need to tackle. Something that's becoming more common is not only using it against remote servers, but also using it against your computer locally. And so what you can do is, is you could set up SSH keys on your host and then allow yourself access with your own SSH key via Ansible. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that we're following that same pattern of checking to see if something exists and if it exists, then doing something with it. For me, it's pretty much always the same spot. So we're gonna do SSH underscore dir equals, and then we're gonna set it to home slash dot SSH. This is our SSH key file. This is our private key. So it's important to check to see if this exists before we try to regenerate it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our SSH directory actually exists. So we're gonna create that directory just like we have before, and then we're gonna change the permissions on it just like we have before with 700s. After we change the permissions on the directory, we then generate our key. Dash F will determine the file that it's saved at. In this case, we're gonna do the file that we're checking. Now there's a few things we wanna do before we finish, which is we wanna make sure that the whole SSH authentication process also works because all we've done so far is just generate the key. What we're actually going to do to solve that problem is we're going to copy the output of our public key, which was generated with our SSH key gen and put the output of that contents into the authorized keys file. The last thing we're going to do is we need to make sure that this file is protected. And you're going to notice a very common pattern, which is I normally set everything only accessible to me. I don't set it to anything else unless it's something I know I want to run everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and save that file. And then after we do that, we're going to run our command one more time. So when we run this, you're going to see, oh, look, I didn't have an IDRSA before. And you can see even here, hey, the user as well as my host name were added as a comment to that and the key's been now generated. Now, that should also mean that if I check my authorized keys file, that that exists there. And if I do that, 
you should see there it is there's my public key now my ansible can run against my own computer and automate and do things for me because i've put that ssh key in there i'm going to go ahead and reopen our dot files script and in here you're going to notice that i've gone ahead and added a new variable to the top of my script and that's the dot files underscore dir variable now that i know that path is a variable and accessible to me i'm going to actually go ahead and change into that directory that means we can run things like our ansible playbook and our Ansible plugin updates. So what I just added was our Ansible install dash R requirements command. What this is gonna do is after we change into our dot files directory, it's going to look for a requirements.yaml file to see if there's anything it needs to install. And if it's installed, it needs to check to see if those need to be upgraded. So now I'm gonna write this file and we're gonna run this command. And now you'll notice that we get a command saying the requirements file home the alta 4 stream dot files requirements dot yaml does not exist and that's because it doesn't our file is now created let's go ahead and run our dot file script one more time when you run this command you're going to get an error it's going to say no requirements found in the file that you just created that's because there are no requirements in that file and as a matter of fact we don't even need this command right now technically the point of me showing you this however was to show you that the really powerful thing about this dot file script is you can handle all of those things that would need to be ran over and over and over again before even running your playbook. So if you look at this logic, we'll see first and foremost, it's checking to see if that file exists just like it was before, except this time we're not including an exclamation mark. That's because we don't wanna to check to see if it doesn't exist, we're checking to see if it exists. So this isn't gonna run unless that requirements file has been created and is in that directory. We're gonna go ahead and close and save, find our file, and then run it again. And when we do that, you're gonna notice we get the same error. That's because that file still exists and we haven't removed it yet. So let's go ahead and do that. There's our file, let's remove it, and then let's run our script one more time. Remember how before, when we didn't have to install Pac-Man, how it just ran instantly? Well, it's doing that again. And that's because now it's seeing, hey, I don't have any file that I need to run against, meaning I don't have to update any plugins. Remember, automation comes first. You don't wanna do everything else and do your automation last. I'm gonna open up my shell script, and at the very bottom, we're gonna add a new command. This is our playbook command. This is what's going to run all of the rest of the automation against our computer. What the Ansible playbook does is it looks for a main.yaml file on your system to check for all the automation you want it to run. For us, that's gonna be the entry point to all the automation on our system. So we're gonna to wanna to put that in the same directory as all of our other dot .files stuff. You can see here, I add it to dot .files underscore dir main dot .yml. The one last thing I'm gonna show you here is, is that I'm including a dash dash diff. This dash dash diff just shows you the differences and changes Ansible makes when it runs the playbook. Let's go ahead and save this file and let's just run this and see what happens. Now you're gonna notice when I run that script, we actually get an error similar to the one that we got before. That's right, we haven't created the file yet, so it's not gonna run. Let's go ahead and create that file now. You'll notice that you get different output this time. As a matter of fact, it actually does try running, but it fails because it has nothing to do. This is actually okay. What this means now is that you have a shell script that is able to set up Ansible for you, as well as run the playbook it needs to. So it's doing exactly what we want. If we run it again, you're gonna notice that it says it every single time. Remember, I said earlier in this video that the goal of this script was to make it so that you had a reproducible configuration management tool that you could run over and over and over again to set up your dev environment. This error simply means that our journey's just begun and now we're gonna write a whole bunch of automation to make our lives even easier. So we've really got a lot of the main problems here that we needed solved. At this point, I say, go automate. Enjoy yourselves and have fun. Anytime that you find an opportunity to automate something, do it. And again, automation should be simple. If it's becoming too complicated or anything like that, take a step back and rethink how you're solving the problem. One more thing to note is I will include all of the source code that we used in today's video, as well as my own personal dot files that this was all inspired from. I literally use this exact same flow every single day and I'm continually developing on it and adding new things that I like. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, go 
feel free to share them. I'm super interested in learning how other people like to automate their environments, and I'm always interested in learning new things. Remember, we stream weekly live on Twitch. We're a variety channel where we do a bunch of different stuff, programming as well as gaming, and that's co-hosted by myself, BG, as well as my good friend and wonderful co-host, Atota. If you ever wanna be a part of our community, you're more than welcome to join the Discord. I hope you enjoy these DevOps deep dives, and I'll see you on the next one.